After a much needed break guys, we are finally back into making YouTube videos. I wasn't actually going to wait this long until uploading the video, but I had to deal with some stuff in my personal life and I didn't want to, anything to interfere with YouTube, so I waited until that was sorted so that I could make the best possible content for you guys, which is what you deserve. And we are kicking things back off with Leeds United. Leeds United had an absolutely incredible first season back in the Premier League last year. They finished in the top half of the table, finishing ninth in the league. But this shouldn't be too surprising because Leeds United's history is rich with success. They've been FA Cup winners once, League Cup winners once, and they've been crowned English champions a total of three times. The last time they won a major trophy was in 1992, so it's been quite a while since they tasted success. But that is going to change because by the end of this video, they are going to become Champions League winners. If you guys have got any requests before FIFA 21 does officially come to an end, leave a comment in the comment section down below. I will try to get to them as soon as I possibly can. If you do go on to enjoy today's video, be sure to leave a like and smash that subscribe button. Can we hit 50 likes on this video and if you haven't seen one of my rebuild videos before here are the rules the main objective of this video is to win the champions league i can make any transfers that i want whilst keeping it as realistic as possible all games have to be simulated, but the Champions League final has to be played. So to start season one, the board have allocated us just under £50 million to spend on the team. Now taking a quick look at the team, there's only a couple of places I would like to improve, but bearing in mind, I have updated the teams. So that does mean we do have Daniel James and Junior Firpo in this squad. But maybe we could be looking into bringing in another centre midfielder role. I mean, I'm obviously going to change the formation. I do not rock with the 4-1-4-1 at all. But once I change the formation, I'll have a better idea on who to bring in. We have made our first signing and signing the Egyptian from Arsenal, Mohamed Al Nenny, 28 years of age, 77 rated. He cost us £9 million on the dot. Now, don't get me wrong, he's not going to be a game changing signing for Leeds United, but he is going to make the quality in the team more well rounded and it's going to make the team perform a little bit better, I think. We have sold our first player of this transfer when Leif Davis has gone to Napoli for £1.45 million. And that does conclude season one's first transfer. Now, this is how the team is looking. This is the strongest start in 11 I think I can possibly field at this moment in time. I'm feeling top 10 finish, guys. We're not going to do anything special in the first two seasons. However, we do have the quality in the team to get a couple of top 10 finishes. Maybe in the third season, we could be pushing for Europe. I would like to see some improvement in the back four. I know Firpo will go up. I think he already has, to be honest, guys. Meisler is only 20 years of age, so I've got a lot of faith in him being our long-term goalkeeper for this video. But nevertheless, guys, let's go to the halfway point of season one and see how we're getting on. At the middle of season one, we are smack bang in the middle of the Premier League. We are 10th in the league quite comfortably as well to be honest but looking at the top 10 look at this Leicester City Liverpool Aston Villa Arsenal Chelsea Wolves City United and Spurs the top of the league I'm liking how it's going so far though guys we're 10th in the league at the halfway point and this is season one imagine what we could do with the right signings in season two we're through to round four of the FA Cup after beating Swansea 2-1 away from home and we crashed out of the Carabao Cup in round two losing 5-4 on penalties to Crystal Palace and that concludes season one second transfer window we've made no sales or purchases during this period because quite frankly we haven't got the money to spend on a decent player to bring in nobody came forward with an offer for a player that seemed enticing enough to take so the team remains the same. I'm going to give Robert to go at the cam roll instead of Rodrigo. He's 21 years of age and 74 rated. I can't believe I didn't even notice him before. But I want to give him a go for a couple of seasons to see how he improves. And I'm also going to give Struwick a go at centre-back role. Because I remember in the QPR rebuild, he was unbelievably good for us towards the end of that rebuild. He was one of the better players that we had at the end. But overall, I'm loving how this team is looking. Rafinha is absolutely tearing it up right now. 85 rated and 24 years of age. Guys, we're going to have to do our best to keep him if we want to do really well in the next couple of seasons. Hopefully by the end of this season, we can maintain our top 10 status in the Premier League. So with that being said, let's go to the end of the season and see how we finish. We do officially finish top 10 in season one, guys. I'm absolutely buzzing with this finish. If we can make the right signs at the beginning of season two, we could potentially be looking at a top six finish. United won the FA Cup, beating Manchester City 5-4 on penalties. And Spurs ended up beating Leicester City 2-0 in the Carabao Cup. Looking at the stats guys, I'm not going to lie, we had a poor season. There's only a couple of players that really stand out to me. Bamford, he got 14 goals, 4 assists, but you'd expect that from a striker in the Premier League. We got Rafinha, who went up to 86 overall by the end of the season, but only bagged 11 goals and 8 assists. I want him to be improving massively on these stats in Season 2. We got Rodrigo bagging himself 9 goals, 1 assist. Jack Harrison with 5 goals and 5 assists. Calvin Phillips bagging himself 4 goals, and he went up to 82 overall as well. Realistically, 
generally speaking, Season 1 was a decent season. We finished in the top 10. The stats aren't that great, but I'm sure by the end of Season 2, those stats have doubled. There's a lot to look forward to in Season 2, so with that being said, let's get into the next season. In Season 2, the board have been very generous in giving us just over £65 million to spend. I know I said I was going to give Roberts a chance, and I did mean it at the time, but with £65 million, I really want to put all that money into bolstering that central attacking midfielder role. And bolstering, we have with Marco Asensio, 25 years of age, 84 rated overall. He cost us just under £60 million to rob away from Real Madrid. We're going for the next five seasons, and I'm very excited to see what he can do for Leeds. We've managed to sell Alioski to Besiktas for just under £4 million. And that does bring the end to the first transfer window in Season 2. This is how the team is currently looking. It's a lot better than it was in Season 1, I must admit, though. James needs to book his ideas up and improve a little bit more. I'm expecting big things from him this season. Rafinha is just absolutely annihilating it on that right-hand side at the minute. 24 years of age and 87 rating. He's an absolute gold mine of a player. We definitely will need a new right-back after this season. I've got faith in Struit coming good, though. He's only 22 years of age, bearing in mind. Other than that, I'm actually really happy with how the team looks. I do have high hopes for Season 2 though, guys. Hopefully we can replicate last season's form. So with that being said, let's go to the halfway point. We are sitting pretty at 7th in the league at the halfway point of Season 2. We're doing extremely well and we are improving on last season's status at the minute. We're only 2 points outside of Europe as well. I've got a good feeling we could potentially have a European finish in Season 2. We're into Round 4 of the FA Cup after beating Birmingham City 3-0 at home. We went out to the Carabao Cup in Round 4 losing 3-2 away from home against Tottenham Hotspur. That does conclude Season 2 second transfer window. We made no purchases or sales due to the fact we blew all of our money bringing in Essencio at the beginning of Season 2. Nobody gave a decent enough offer for us to accept and get rid of any of the players that we've already got. So for that reason, the team does remain the same. I must admit, I'm a bit disappointed in Daniel James, guys. He's 24 years of age, 79 rated. I was expecting him to be in the 80s at this point. I think we're going to have to replace our right back, Eiling. He's 30 years of age. He'll be 31 by the time season three comes around so maybe another winger and a right back are on the cards for season two we're currently seventh in the league let's hope that we can get our place in europe by the end of season two so with that being said let's get to the end of the season and see if we've done it we've just managed to scrape europe in season two guys just pipping chelsea to the post i'm not too sure how that works considering our goal difference is exactly the same but i don't really care we are in europe in season two tottenham Hotspur beat aston villa 5-4 on penalties in the fa cup final and liverpool beat Manchester City 2-0 in the Carabao Cup final. Okay, I'm officially confused. Considering Rodrigo was on the source bench, he's got the best out out of anybody in the entire team. He scored 22 goals, assisting 4. Rafinha's stats improved. He scored 16, scoring 10. Bamford got 13 goals, assisting 5. Daniel James is finally 80 rated. It's about damn time. He scored 7 goals, assisting 4. The question is though, what happened to Asensio? Like, where's he? He's got... What? One goal and one assist? Are you joking me? How is that even possible? Possible. I thought bringing in Asensio would have been an amazing signing, but he's done absolutely nothing of value. If anything, we should be starting Rodrigo over Asensio. That is absolutely appalling. But nevertheless, guys, we did manage to get Europe, so that means our budget next year is going to dramatically increase. So let's go to Season 3. In Season 3, the board have given us a little bit more money, giving us just under £67 million to spend. Now, to be fair, I'm actually really happy with how this team looks. Daniel James, I'm going to give him a couple more seasons just to see what he can do. I might change my mind a little bit later, but for now, I want to give him a bit of a chance. But we definitely do have to replace our right-back. I think we just found our perfect replacement right-back in Daniel Carvajal. 30 years of age, 86 rated, and he cost us £60 million on the dot to steal away from Real Madrid. I know he's 30 years old and he's gained on a bit, but he's still got a good couple of years left in him where he can be really, really good for us. And that is the end of the first transfer window in season three this is how we go into season three looking and i'm not gonna lie to you i've got a feeling we're gonna do really really well this season there's not really any weak links anymore struik may have to get replaced in season four or maybe season three second transfer window if we do have the funds to replace him but this is a really strong team as well and we are in the europa league as well so i'm hoping we can do quite well in the europa league with that being said though let's go see
see who's in our group stage. We're in group K along with Hertha Berlin, Galatasaray and FK Bodo Glimt. I've never heard of that bottom team. I do apologise for butchered that. I've got a feeling it's going to be us alongside either Hertha Berlin or Galatasaray going through the round of 32. The quality in our team suggests to me that we could quite comfortably make it into the round of 32 in the Europa League. But nevertheless, guys, let's go to the halfway point of the season and see if I'm right. As predicted, guys, we very comfortably booked our place into the round of 32 along with Hertha Berlin, who only just managed to pit Galatasaray to the post. Hang on, that doesn't make any sense. They've got what? What? Galatasaray's got more goal difference than Hertha Berlin. Oh, I don't care. We're through and that's all that matters. Who's our opponent in the round of 32? We're up against AZ, but I feel like with the quality that we've got, we shouldn't worry about them too much. We're in the top six in the Premier League at the halfway point as well. We're not too far outside of the Champions League as well. We're about eight points away from it. If we can continue our form going into the second half of the season, we could potentially be looking at Champions League in season four. We're through to round four of the FA Cup after beating Charlton at home 1-0. We unfortunately crashed out of the Carabao Cup up in the quarterfinals, losing 1-0 against Tottenham Hotspur. And that concludes the second transfer window in Season 3. We haven't made any sales or purchases for the same reason as the last two seasons, if I'm being totally honest with you. This is how the team is currently looking going into the second half of the season. We do need another centre-back for Season 4. I do believe if we can get another centre-back, maybe another CDM, and maybe another left mid, we could potentially push for Champions League next season. Junior Firpo is out for about three weeks, so he will miss the round of 32 tie against AZ. It's always the knockout stages where my players get in injured don't they but nevertheless let's go to the AZ fixture I'm not going to front with you guys I don't know a single player from AZ starting 11 so it's pointless me going through with it with you but Rafinha is 90 rated overall guys he's 90 rated oh my god what an absolute baller he has turned out to be for Leeds Junior Firpo has managed to recover from his injury in time for the first round of this fixture which surprised me because I swear his injury was longer than this but nevertheless I'm not bothered it's boosting our strength massively going into this tie let's see what we can do we're very very good away from here can we get an advantage yes we can we go 2-1 up on aggregate with two away goals AZ have a mountain to climb in the second leg we're 2-1 up on aggregate against AZ with two away goals meaning AZ have all the work cut out for them to do Leeds all we have to do is maintain a good performance and we should book our place in the round of 60 let's see if we can put the nail in the coffin for AZ oh my god we absolutely annihilate them at home we beat them 4-0 at home securing our place in the round of 16. We're up against Slavia Praha in the round of 16. Now, I'm not going to lie. If we've just beaten AZ quite comfortably in the round of 32, we should have absolutely no issues getting past Slavia Praha. So with that being said, we're going to skip everything. I'm not going to lie. I don't know a single player from that team either. So we're going to quick sim this game. Hopefully, we can absolutely annihilate them at home. Oh, my God. Wait, what? So, okay, we lose 2-1 away from home. Oh, my God. Oh, it does look like they got really lucky as well. We absolutely annihilated them on stats, but we just couldn't finish our dinner it's that 3-3 aggregate glitch again i don't know why that happens but nevertheless guys we are 2-1 down going into the second leg hopefully we can pull this one out of the bag we are down 2-1 on aggregate going into the second leg guys but we are notoriously amazing away from home i think this is the first time we've actually gone into the second leg of the europa league tie down on aggregate so we are in unfamiliar territory right now but i will put my money on us every day of the week Bagging our place in the quarterfinals against Slavia Praha. Can we do it though, guys? Can we get a comfortable win? Can we do it? I think we've managed to win. I think we've managed to do it on away goals, guys. Asenio Jr. and Rafinha getting the goals that we needed to get into the quarterfinals. Now, this is going to be a tough time. We're up against Wolfsburg from the Bundesliga, guys. They have got a good team. They've got Maratti, Schalke, Golovin, Bruma, Castiles, Majrawi, Baku. Guys, they've got a very, very good team, to be honest. It's going to be quite a tricky fixture, this is. We're notoriously amazing away from home. So hopefully we can get a good advantage going into the second leg. Can we do it? We lose 1-0. Oh my God. Okay. We lose 1-0. Stefan in the first minute and we never quite recovered from it. Okay. We aren't exactly having it our own way in the Europa League this time. Hopefully when we get to the second round at home, we can absolutely annihilate them. We are at home in this fixture, so hopefully we can put the home advantage to good use. We really do need to improve our defensive lineup for season four, man. Honestly, I think Struik at the minute is letting us down big time because he's got quality around him, but he isn't good enough himself. But with that being said, guys, let's see if we've got the quality.
Quality and our team to overturn this aggregate and book our place in the next round of the Europa League. Oh my god, we've done it as well. We're through to the next round. We beat them on penalties and we are through to the next round. I've just said that twice. I'm saying it another time. We're through to the next round. Who is our next opponent? We've got Atletico Bilbao in the semi-finals. They've got Berrichichi, they've got Simon, they've got Palacios, they've got Dembele, they've got Cordoba, Teze, Lovato, Gomez. I think Wolfsburg did have the better team and we just knocked them out. So I'm quite confident going into this fixture. Hopefully we can use the fact that we are a team to give us an advantage going into the second leg. So can we do it? Can we book up? Oh my God, we've done it. We get a 1-0 advantage going into the second leg. We are one win away from potentially booking our place in the Europa League final. We're 1-0 up on our going into this second leg it's not an away goal though but we are away from home now and we are so good away from home it's absolutely mental in this rebuild series Atletico have got all the work to do I'm quite chilling I'm not gonna lie to you I think we've got this in the bag Hopefully, we can put this tie to bed in this second leg and book our place in the Europa League final. We do as well. We've absolutely smashed it. We are into the Europa League final. The question is, who is our final opponent in this European competition? One thing I've just realised, guys, is if we win this, no matter where we finish in the league, we have got Champions League football next season, which will be a massive, massive achievement for us in only season three. It will also massively boost our budget, so hopefully we can pull off the victory against Real Madrid. Sociedad. Unfortunately, Firpo has picked up a suspension, so Dallas is in that left-back position, taking his spot for this game. Real Sociedad's team is Oyarzabal, Silva, Rabio, Porto, Alastondo, Ramiro, Sensei. It's a very, very good team, guys. I'm not going to lie to you. We're going to have a work cut out in this fixture. But nevertheless, we are away from home. It's Real Sociedad versus Leeds United in the Europa League final. Can we get our first bit of silverware in this? Oh my God, we've done it. We're into the Champions League next year and we've got our first bit of silverware for Leeds United in this rebuild video. Come on! The question we have to ask now though, guys, is where did we finish elsewhere? It's a damn good job we won the Europa League. Otherwise, we would not be in the Champions League at all next season. We finished just outside the top four. Well, not just outside. 13 points outside the top four this season. But nevertheless, we did book our place in the Champions League next season. Thank the Lord. Spurs beat Manchester City 1-0 in the FA Cup final. And Spurs beat Liverpool in the Carabao Cup final, giving them the double this season. And Barcelona won the Champions League, beating PSG 1-0 in the final. Oh my God, Rafinha's 92 rated overall. Oh my God, what a season he's had. 29 goals, 12 assists. What an absolute baller this guy is. Bamford bagged himself 23 goals and 8 assists this season, going up to 83 rated overall. Essentially had a far better season this time, having 15 goals and 7 assists. It's those three really that have carried this team this season. But next season, we're going to be bringing in good quality players in certain positions and hopefully we can make a try for it in the Champions League. Let's see what we can do next season. Season 4, the board have given us just under £170 million to spend. And I know exactly where I'm buying for. We're getting another centre-back, another CDM and another left mid. We have our centre-back, John Stones, 29 years of age, 85 rated. He cost us £50 million on the dot. He's one of three signings I really, really want to get in this first transfer window. We've got our second signing, Mauro Arambari. He cost us a total of £57.1 million to rob away from Burnley, 27 years of age, 85 rated. Rated the perfect CDM. One more player to get though. Welcome back to the Premier League, Eden Hazard. 32 years of age, 86 rated. He cost us £48 million to rob away from Real Madrid. I am so happy I've managed to get this guy back. He should never have left Chelsea, in my opinion. His career has just gone down bank since he's gone to Real Madrid. So hopefully we can rejuvenate his career at 32 and bring him back to his best. We've had to sell Junior Firpo. He wasn't happy with the wages and there was no way we could actually give him the wages that he wanted because he put a transfer request in. So we have sold him to buy him for 50 £51.2 million. Pounds. We have found our replacement left back in Rafael Guerrero. We bought him from Manchester United for £35 million pounds on the dot. 29 years of age, 83 rated. I know that he's a bit of a downgrade from Junior Firpo, but with the current funds that we've got, he's the best we could do. And that concludes Season 4's first transfer window. This is how the team is currently looking. I am absolutely buzzing with how this team looks right now. I think we've got a genuine shot at going quite far 
are in the Champions League. We're not going to win it this year without a shadow of a doubt. Maybe in next season or the season after, after we bring in a couple of more players. But I think depending on who we draw, we could go quite far this time. With that being said, let's go see who's on our group. We're up against Inter Milan, PSV and KRC Genk. So hopefully we can make it out of Group D. Realistically speaking, it's going to be between ourselves, Inter Milan and PSV on who goes through to the round of 16. Genk haven't got a chance in hell. Hopefully it's ourselves in Inter. I can't see PSV being strong enough. But I could be wrong. I have been wrong in the past. Let's go to the halfway point of the season and see what we've done. We did quite comfortably make it through to the round of 16 after all. Winning the group outright quite comfortably. Only losing one in the process. Inter Milan finished second only finishing three points below us. But with that being said, guys, let's see who our opponents are in the round of 16. Okay, guys, we're in a bit of trouble here. We're going up against Real Madrid. We've just nicked two of their best players in the last two seasons, though, so hopefully it isn't all bad news. We are just outside the top four in the Premier League. We're one point behind Spurs, who are currently fourth place. To be honest, guys, it's actually going really well season four for us so far. We went out of the FA Cup, losing 3-2 away from home against West Ham. We are currently in the semi-finals against Manchester City in the Carabao Cup. That does conclude season four, second transfer winner. We've got no funds to make any purchases and nobody came in for any of the players, so the team does remain the same. Eden Hazard's gone down by two overall. I shouldn't be too surprised. He's 33 years of age after all, but part of me did think that he might have improved a little bit, but nevertheless, it's one of those. I gambled on it and I lost. Oh, well, it is what it is. But the rest of the team is looking absolutely brilliant. Even our subs bench is actually really stacked. We're up against Real Madrid though, so let's go to that fixture and see what we can do. Guerrero's picked up a suspension so Dallas has taken his place for the time being but Real Madrid's team Jesus Christ their team is absolutely insane Koulibaly up on Meccano Tini Goncalves Courtois and that's only the back line look at that team guys we haven't got a chance I don't think I think that they're gonna absolutely wipe the floor with us we're notoriously amazing away from home though so hopefully we can use that put it to good use and get an advantage going into the set oh my god we've beaten them 3-1 We've absolutely annihilated them away from home. I told you guys, we are amazing away from home. Hopefully, that could be enough to book our place in the quarterfinals of the Champions League this time. It all depends on how we do in the second leg. It's literally hours to lose, guys. Real Madrid, I've got such a mountain to climb in this game. They are 3-1 down on aggregate with three away goals to overturn. It genuinely looks like they've got everybody that you can think of. Look at that team, guys. Cruz at centre forward's a little bit tricky. I'm not going to lie. He's, he's a centre mid, not a centre forward. But other than that, guys, their, t their team's absolutely insane. But we've got a 3-1 aggregate. We are up 3-1 on aggregate, guys. If we lose this somehow, we do not deserve to do this rebuild series anymore. With that being said, can we finish the job off and book our place in the round of... Oh my god, we've done it, we've done it, we've done it! Come on! We've just knocked out one of the biggest threats to us in winning this Champions League. Oh my god. Well, the question remains, guys. Who's our next opponent in the quarterfinals? Right, I don't want to sound cocky, but after Real Madrid, this should be a much easier fixture. We're up against Real Sociedad. Hopefully, we've got enough in our team. We've got enough quality in the team to do them over in the first leg at home. Can we get an advantage going into the second leg? We do as well. We beat them 2-1 at home. Hazard and Koch coming in clutch. Guys, I've got a feeling we're going to pull off an absolute miracle here and do it in Season 4. Imagine if we actually did that, guys. Honest to God. On to the second leg we go. It's ours to lose, guys. We're 2-1 up on aggregate. They do have an away goal, though, however. But we are amazing away from home as we continue to prove again and again and again. Their team does remain unchanged, I believe, apart from their striker. But other than that, it does look pretty much the same. The question is, can we book our place in the semi-finals? Can we knock out Real Sociedad? Oh my god, we're in the semi-finals, guys. We've absolutely smashed it. We knock out Real Madrid in the round of 16. We knock out Real Sociedad in the quarterfinals. Who's next? Guys, we're going to our biggest challenge so far in this video with our best player out on suspension. Rafinha has picked up a suspension, so James has to take his place. I'm not going to lie, guys. That does not fill me with confidence going up against United. They have got such a good team. Just look at that team. Rashford, Fernandez, Sancho, Moise Keane, Locatelli, Van der Beek, Henderson, Skriniar, Wambasaka, Zagadou, and Alexandro. Guys, that team is absolutely incredible. I don't think we've got a good chance here at all. We've got a very, very good team, don't get me wrong. But without Rafinha, our chances have dwindled massively. But nevertheless, guys, we're away from home. Hopefully, we can put that form to good use and get an advantage going into the second leg. What? What do you mean for? What? 
What is going on? Why are we beating everyone 4-1 away from home? This is mental. What is going on? Stones, Guerrero, Hazard, and Asensio get the goals. Locatelli. What is going on? Why are we beating Manchester United 4-1 away from home? This should not be happening. If we're beating them 4-1 away from home without Rafinha, what could we have done with him? It would have been double figures. Guys, it is literally ours to lose in the second leg. Should we literally just skip to the final now? Or it is literally ours to lose, guys. We're 4-1 up on aggregate. That's four away goals as well. I genuinely can't see us going out now. I can't. If we go out somehow now with our best player back in the starting eleven. I do not know what to tell you. But nevertheless, we're up against United. We're 4-1 up on aggregate. If we lose somehow, we don't deserve to do this anymore. Let's see if we can book our place in the final. We absolutely kill it. We lose 2-1 in the end, but it doesn't matter. We did enough in the first leg to secure our place in the Champions League final in Season 4. What is going on, guys? Who's our final opponent in the Champions League? Our final opponent is up against none other than Bayern Munich, the German giants themselves. But before we get into that game let's see how we've done elsewhere this season okay so in a shocking turn of events Aston Villa have won the bloody Premier League this season finishing four points above Tottenham Hotspur who finished second we finished fourth I'm very happy with a fourth place finish I'm not gonna lie we're in the Champions League final but Villa have absolutely killed it this season Man City beat Derby County 2-0 in the FA Cup final Derby County in the final or something that's something they don't see every day and Manchester City do get the double this year beating Burnley 3-1 in the final fair play to Burnley getting to the final as well Jesus. And Napoli beat AS Monaco in the Europa League final as well. Guys, our boys have done absolutely incredible this season. Just take a look at these stats. Bamford, he's gone up to 85 rated at 30 years of age. 32 goals and 4 assists he's got this year. That's insane. Essentially, he's got 21 goals and 22 assists this season. That is beyond incredible. Rafinha got 19 goals and 10 assists, going up to 93 rated overall as well. Guys, he's been the standout for Leeds ever since season one. He's been absolutely amazing for us. Andy Eden Hazard, even though he did go down two overall, he got himself 17 goals and six assists. To be honest, guys, I'm buzzing with how we've done so far. The only way we could top it is by beating Bayern Munich and getting the Champions League for Leeds United. Unfortunately, Calvin Phillips has picked up a suspension, so Al Nenny has taken his place in the starting 11 for the final. It's a big blow to us, but nevertheless, we have to move without Calvin Phillips. Bayern Munich's team is absolutely incredible. Odegaard, Nabry, Gomez, Komen, Kimi, our boy Junior Firpo, Neuer, Vencedor. It's a very, very good team, guys. We're going to have a work cut out for us, but nevertheless, it is Leeds United versus Bayern Munich in the Champions League final. Let's see what we can do. We've got Rafinha on the ball. He's up against Junior Firpo. These guys know each other very well. We've got it to Bamford. Bamford. Bamford, what can we do? We've got it to Carvial. Carvial to El Nani. El oh, God. Get it away from El Nani. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Asensio. Hazard! Oh, my God. We made it 1-0 just like that. Just like that. We've made it 1-0 in the eighth minute with a courtesy of a Hazard goal. Look at him. He's back to his best. Well, he's not really. He's 84 rated. But still, he's back to his best. Come on. El Nenny, he finds Bamford. Bamford finds Asensio. Asensio sees Hazard open as you like. And Hazard uses his left foot and bangs it past Neuer on his right hand side. And it is 1 0 to Leeds United in the final of the Champions League. Come on! Guys, by the way, if you can hear drilling in the background, I really do apologise. Literally, I've waited all day for a prime opportunity to record this video. And some absolute dipshits just decided to get his drill out and start drilling for no reason. Cheers, mate. Hazard's on the ball. Bamford. Bamford finds it. Oh, my God. What a bit of player that is. Can we get the ball roll? Can he make it too? Oh, my God. Oh, my God. That was just too good. That was actually insane. Guys, we're tearing Bayern Munich apart right now. Hazard is back to his best. I don't care what his overall says. His overall could say 52 for all I care. He is playing like he did at Chelsea. Absolutely unstoppable. Let's take a look at this. Rafael Guerrero finds Hazard. Ball roll inside. 
Finesse shot, and it is game over. Absolutely done and dusted. by Munich are not coming back from this. Mark my words. Oh, no. Guys, guys, guys. Guys, through. They are actually through. Guys, they're through. Okay, stoned. Oh, no, 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 no. Oh, my God. <laughs> oh, dear God. That's why you're playing for Arsenal, mate. And that's half-time, guys. And I'm going to say this. That was the most dominant half of football I have had in the Champions League final of this rebuild series so far. We have absolutely annihilated by Munich. The proof's in the pudding, guys. They have had 18% possession. That's Arsenal-esque, that is. We've absolutely annihilated them. It's not like we've been playing it around the back either. We've just been trying to find openings, but they've started playing high-pressure football. So I don't really want to lose the ball, so I'm just keeping it around. So I'm just playing it around their area a little bit, but they've not gained any openings, and I don't want to waste the ball because I know how deadly Bayern Munich can actually be. But the way we're playing, guys, this game is dead and buried. They've got the ball with Kerman on the left-hand side of the pitch. Can Carvel take care of it? Oh, my God. God, yes, he can. He absolutely flattens Koeman. Sonos on the ball on the right-hand side of the field. Guerrero's in chase. Guerrero, can he... What can he do? Oh, yeah. Guys, Bayern Munich aren't playing like Bayern Munich at all. I can't even lie to you. Can we get this to Bamford? Yes, we can. Bamford is away. Bamford is away. Tim versus Rocket. We're going to do the ball roll. Oh, yeah. It's it's done. It's done. It's 3-0. It's done. It's done. It's done. Bamford gets the ball. He's in acres of space. And it's a cheeky little ball roll. Takes the defender completely out. And Neuer is just not the Neuer that we used to know and love. Neuer is the past version of himself right now. And he is absolutely getting annihilated. Bamford slots it past him like he's not even there. And Leeds United are well on their way to becoming European champions. Oh, Bayern Munich is starting to play nice football now. Guys, guys. Okay, okay. Yeah, fair play, fair play. The... The second they start playing nice football, they score. Literally, if they'd have done this all game, it would have been an half-decent competitive game, but they've been playing like absolute toddlers so far this game. It's literally just now they started playing that Bayern Munich. Just take a look at this. I can't get the ball off him at this point. Odegaard, we bring our defender out a little bit by accident. So that's my bad. That probably gave away the goal, to be honest. But it's 3-1, 81st minute. There's not much they can really do at this point. We've got the ball with the Inazo. Oh, that's it. That is full time. And Leeds United are officially European champions for, I believe, the first time in their club history. What a day. Oh, guys, I can't believe I've just pressed X. That's because I haven't done it in so long. I'm so used to pressing X. Oh! Be sure to leave a comment down below when you want me to rebuild next. I'm doing every team I possibly can before FIFA 22 comes out. So if it doesn't get done before FIFA 22, it will get done in FIFA 22. I promise you that now. And if you did go on to enjoy today's video, you know what to do. Be sure to leave a like and smash that subscribe button. Can we hit 50 likes on this video? I can't tell you guys how much I've missed doing these videos. It's honest to God been so good to get back into it. With that being said, thank you guys so much for watching. Thank you for being patient with me. And until next time, I'll see you later.